This is Sam Robson. It is March 20th, 2017, and I am here in the city of Mabaruka at the District Health uh, Medical Team office. Uh, and I'm pleased to be joined by Augustine uh, Babo uh, Carbo. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry if that was terrible. No, it's no problem. <laughs> okay. Um, this interview is part of our CDC Ebola Response Oral History Project. Um, and I'm just I'm pleased to be talking with Augustine about his own experiences fighting back against the worst Ebola outbreak in, in history um, as of now. So thank you so much for joining me, Augustine. Most welcome. Of course. Um, and so can I just first ask, would you mind saying my name is and then pronouncing your full name? Um, my name is Augustine Babakabu. I'm a Sigalunian mm -hmm. in the northern province. Um, Tonkolele districts. I'm working with the D district management team in Tonkolele. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me more about your current position, just a little bit? Um, I call him question for now. I'm working with the community health workers that are the CHWs in the Tonkolele district. I'm the focal person working with them. Um, perfect. I think that's all for now. Yeah, and if if you were to tell someone in just a few sentences what it was that you did during the Ebola response, what would you say? Um, during the time of, of um, the Ebola, um, we set up a committee in the districts um, because we see that um, Tsongkolele is banner with seven other districts and Tsongkolele is in the middle. So anything that happened within the nearby district, it will affect us. So that's why we sit together with, with my then former DMO, Dr. Brema Osayo, Kamara, to make sure that we track down people that are sick in the community so that we can remove them earlier and tested. And if we find them positive, we make sure that we put it in place to um, um, quarantine them or separate them from their families and so that the virus w will not continue to um, kill their families. So we set up an uh, operation as we call um, Chase the Virus, Operation Chase the Virus. Um, by that time... Can I, can I interrupt you for just yeah. a second? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that is really good for an initial summary. Uh, yeah. Would you mind if we back up a little bit and just, and I ask you about growing up and your childhood and that. So where, where and when you were born? Where were you born? Um, I was born in Maboka. Um, so I was born in Maboka, in Tokolele District. Um, 6th January 1976 um, in Maboka Government Hospital. I started, I started my primary education in Maboka uh, Roman Catholic um, Primary School. I pursued my, my, my um, secondary school in Government Secondary School for Boys, Maboka. Thereafter, I went to the college, to College of Medicine, where, where I read um, pharmacology, and um, I was given a certificate as a pharmacy technician. And I thought it fit because during that time I was in in the store working at at the, the district medical stores. So I thought it fit that I need to capacitate myself. I, I furthered my studies um, in McKinney University, um, doing um, logistic management and procurement. Um, that is diploma. Um, I was there for two years. Thereafter, I came back for some time um, to work in the D DHMT. Um, when this Ebola outbreak started in this part of our country, that time um, we did not have a lot of equipment like vehicles, 
um, IPCs, a lot of things. Everything is da um, low down there. Because could you imagine that time we only have, have one ambulance in in the north, running from um, Tsonkolele, Cambia, Poloko, and Bombali. We only have, only have one ambulance. But through the support of other, other partners, we managed to have another vehicle. But we are still having a lot of cases from the communities. So eventually, that's why our DMO, Dr. Brahma Sayo, taught him that we need to go to the community to look for the suspected and to really talk with them. And if there is any, any suspected, we we'll isolate those people and have them tested. If they, they, they found or if they prove positive, we need to take measures by quarantine in place. So that's why we launched our, the operation Chase the Virus in Tokoli District. And up to that point, what had been what had been your role in the um, response? I was the head of contact tracing. Um, any area where we have a positive result or any community, I have my men that are we usually send for them to uh, um, quarantine and monitor the people for the next 21 days. But um, I'm also um, organizing this Operation Chase the Virus because, you see, we have people in the communities, we have our contact tracers in the communities. So at any time when they call that um, there is a suspected person here, we usually go there. And it's really not easy by that time because we, we don't have a lot of logistics. Um, in fact, during that time, um, um, Masanga gave us one ambulance that we are using. We most times use that, uh, that ambulance to remove patients. But the, the, the problem lies, the area where ambulance cannot reach, motorbike cannot reach. So what we do is that we use our motorbike, we, we wear PPE, go there and remove them. Sometimes we, we have them back um, in our bikes to remove them, to access them to the ambulance and having them convey to the hospital and thereafter they tested. If they found positive, we further do our investigation there and have them quarantine and continue to monitor the, 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 the communities. But it's, it's really not easy because as a, 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 a worker of the district management team, a worker of, of the MOHS, we are here to save lives. So uh, we need to give ourselves to make sure that we save the life of, of the people in, in their community. And a lot of things happen because uh, it's really not easy because that time we are not too aware about Ebola. Um, not a lot of trainings, just discussions. And it was terrible that they are calling up and down. Um, during that time again, we, have, we started to have another support in which we received some vehicles and we continue. I think it's a matter of time when NAC came in and started working with us and have, having the, the office transferred at Masokodia for further uh, response. But um, really, uh, it's really not easy for, for we and the DHMT because um, logistics are not provided on time. And Logistics can only be provided on time when they are available there. So we we'll try to manage our little resources to make sure that we don't have a lot of contacts. That's why this part of Tonkolele is, is bounded with uh, seven other districts. Um, we we'll try at least to minimize the, um, the, um, um, the contacted Ebola persons. And even I think we have a lot of survivors because why we have a lot of survivors because we don't allow um, people to move from their community to come. We meet them. If we know that they have met in the, the case definition, we mount on um, a quarantine and try to remove the, the people there, um, especially those who are sick, to the nearby hospital and have them tested. 
and sometimes we usually use our um, DHM vehicle, that the, the demo vehicle, and one ambulance that we receive from MSF to even do some active surveillance within that day. That's why most of the time when we move to the community, we move by 7, 8 o'clock during the night because by that time, most of them should have come back home. So we do house-to-house -house inspection and when we found that you have any one sign or two signs, we'll make sure that we move you out there and have you in the government hospital thereafter we have we, we have uh, your blood tested um, and we have your, your blood sample and we we'll send the sample to the to um, Kailan for tested if it's proved positive we we'll continue to do our investigation within that community and make sure that we talk with the, the people around there especially the contact tracer the community so that they will continue to monitor these people this is our, our way how we make sure that we we manage this Ebola until the time when that came in and have themselves continue to support the program. Yeah. Thank you, Augustine. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering if we can start back toward the beginning of your, your response work again. And could you just kind of take me through your process of building your team of contact tracers, of, of training them to do the job? Yeah. Um, for the contact tra tracing, we have them based in their, com in their community. You must be in your community because at the end of the day, you know the, the population in your community. You as contact tracer, you know your the population in your community. You know um, visitors that are visiting the community. You know the people that I have to see. Because if I, I'm living in a, in, a, in a certain community, I know I don't see a person two to three time, um, um, days, and we know that there's something wrong. So that's why we involve most of the contact tracers um, people find themselves in their communities. So we, we gave them phones um, that we, we supported through UNFPA. We gave them phones. So at any time, they suspect sick person or any other disease condition, they try to call us immediately. And in fact, um, at any time that they call, by that time, we don't have, a bike, we don't have vehicles. We are using bikes, motorbikes. We only go with, uh, with vehicle or ambulance when we know that hey, there is a, a, a suspected case there. But during that time, we, we have bikes until the, the, the advent of um, a CDC that they continue to support us. Um, sometimes we all, we, are, we all go to the field to make sure that we monitor and um, do some case finding so that at the end of the day, we will track down all those people we think that they, are con they have contacted the disease. Can you tell me about one or two of, of your contact tracers who you supervise? Just describe them a little bit. Yeah, um, in fact, I have a contact tracer at um, um, Mabiko. In fact, he too got the virus, contacted the virus. Unfortunately, he dies. He dies. Eh? Um, really, to become a contact tracer is, not, is really an, a challenge during the time of Ebola. In fact, I even want to have one of my contact, uh, contact tracer by the name of Alfred Kamara, who was be beaten because of he, he was given information in the community. So we have a lot of challenges. Um, why you see um, the Ebola, we have a lot of suspected cases and even confirmed and survivors in this part of Kony case. Um, during the time of Ebola, there, is a, there are a lot of deniers there. So, and they are in, in fact um, beating our contact tracers. So, people are afraid to give us reports. So, by then, unless when we have um, people tested, or maybe there is a, a person who is seriously sick in, in that community, before ever we try to mobilize ourselves and have them in the move. But during that time, maybe when you go there, we we'll meet a, one or two persons die. A lot of things. Even uh, one area, one house, the chief's house in Masokowe. Um, there is a heavy denier as a chief. And we removed there about five um, 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 suspected kids there. In fact, even the, the other one that I removed, I, I went there during the night with Dr. Sayo. I used a PP. I, I went right in, in their bedrooms and trying to remove the, 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 the contacted person there. 
But yes, still we have a high denial rate. That's why. But we managed to work with our contact tracer. In fact, how they, uh, they have been um, describing the house of any suspected um, community or any house of a suspected, they most times have some um, things that they have to identify. So when they call us, they identify things that, okay, when you are going so, 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 so area, just look where there is a, 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 a blue or red pieces or there is a, a big stone. Those, those are the things that we used to identify. So when we go there, we will not even call the contact tracer. We go there direct. That's why most times when we are traveling, we wait around seven to eight when we know that people come back. Because when they know that we are, we are doing this um, operation chase virus, during the day, they find themselves in their, in their farms, being there till seven, eight o'clock after they get back home. Since we know that during that time they get back home, we most times launch our operation during the time, during the night, to have them track because that time we made them write in, in, in their bedroom and have them um, and checked up. And if, if that confuses us to remove them, we we'll remove them immediately. If we, if we, we come with them after test, uh, tested, we see this negative, we we'll know that it's negative, but despite you are negative, we we'll always monitor you again for the next 21 days. We we'll can't tell. That's why you see in Tongole District, we try to cajole this um, crisis because our surveillance was too active and we make sure that we reach people. We don't allow the people to come back. I think that, that's the area that I, I took contact with the disease. <laughs> Although I contacted, I think, I, two ways that I read my ups. Either I contacted the disease from the ambulance driver because we have, we have four ambulance drivers at that time. We have three laboratory guys. We lost two laboratory guys and um, one ambulance driver. And then um, um, two of them get contacted the disease but they, uh, managed to survive. So I don't know if, if um, the time when we are doing our operation chase virus, sometimes we sit down together in the ambulance. A lot of things, because if you, we really want to move in any location, if we don't have a sufficient logistics, we have to make sure that we, we use the logistics that we have. Using the ambulance, one ambulance, all of us who are there, when we track them down, we allow the ambulance to convey them to the hospital. Thereafter, we follow um, back and make sure that we put things in place. So this is the way how, we are, how we have been working with the response. Despite of limited resources, limited funds, limited logistics, but we still manage to have this thing uh, calm down. Yeah. When you only have one ambulance. Yeah, during go. that time, in fact, during that time, only over one ambulance in, in, in the north, not for Tongole District. But for uh, several districts, like four districts. Four districts, yeah, Bombali, Poloko, and Cambia. Yeah. We are using that ambulance was provided by MRC. How do you, how do you prioritize? So how do you prioritize? Yeah. It's based on the inflows that we have, the contacted that we have. That's why we, during that time, we have the hospital as the only center. We have a lot of them removed from their community, especially when we know that these are suspected. We have them in, in, in the hospitals and have them um, remove their, sample, their blood samples and um, have them tested at the end of the day. If you prove uh, positive, we will make sure that we send you immediately. That's why you see you have, have a lot of survivors. And if you prove negative, we will send you to another world. You'll be there for the next 50, uh, 21 days for you to be still um, 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 make sure that you don't have the virus. We lay our, we put things in place, but um, it's really not easy. Because of, of us, um, I, I only realized maybe 400,000 per month during the time of I'm um, doing the contact, uh, as a coordinator of contact tracing, give you 400,000. But yes, still, we are not looking for the money. This is our country. We need to fight. We need, we need to sacrifice our life. If we have, we have been looking for money, is a problem, but we managed to to sacrifice ourselves, sacrifice our lives to uh, cajole this outbreak. It's so, really not easy. So I assume that sometimes there were real shortages of money. Yeah, there is no money. You know, DHMT, it's really a big problem. That's why we are praying for God, let's don't have this type of crisis, really, because we are really de de demotivated, especially we health staff that we opt for this um, Ebola outbreak. It's people, really not easy. Were people always getting paid on time? Well, uh, some, for we, the DHMT is only, 
we are we are receiving our usual salary, but not for Ebola. I, I just received for Ebola when I was making charge uh, from this um, 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 contact tracing coordinator, um, funded by UNFP, giving me for four hundred thousand every month. But yesterday I managed that because that time I have my own family. It's really not easy. Yeah. Mm. Can you tell me about what it felt like? sending your contact tracers into areas where there might have been resistance? You, you described one I, person being, I don't know, I, I don't remember if you said beaten by a rock or had rocks thrown at him. What's it like as the supervisor, like, like sending probably your younger people into that kind of environment? Yeah, you know, by that time, you know, we don't have um, opportunity of jobs again, especially when we have this crisis. So we have these guys in the Guinea community. Like, example, like Konike, we have one or two supervisors supervising the, the contact tracers. And you know, most of these contact tracers are community health workers. They have been working in that community. So at any time when we, we go there with an ambulance, we just go straight out to the, to the house and remove the, 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 the suspected. Straight away, they will know that a hey, social person is, is, is contact tracing, doing the contact tracing in this community. So maybe he should have called us. That's why well, I make sure that we give them phones and the rest of the thing. We usually have a free calls, CUGs, that's what we've been using. So these are the things. You see, but there, there, there have been a lot of um, 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 frustrating things happening in our community, abusing them, giving them all kind of names, stoning them. In fact, they don't have trust in them during that time. Thank God. A lot of NGO came in to build up confidence, community engagement, doing before ever they have them conf have confidence. Because they know that at any time when there is an ambulance door there and have the, a person removed. You know, the time of Ebola, people have, uh, have seen the, the hospitals as a, a, a area of dying. When you want to die during the time of Ebola, go, go to the hospital, you die. Or go to your uh, our health center, you die. So that's why when we use these guys, they call us, we go there and remove them. You see, that's why you see most of people are not accessing the health facility. We have these a lot of quacks. People are doing some quacking in their community because they, they don't have um, trust on, on health staff again because of this Ebola. You see, so these are the things happening. But thank God, the, the, the communities, the contact tracer that we have from, from the community, from our communities, they work very hard to make sure that we put the, this thing into zero. Um, it's good that we use their, 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 their children in their community because if we should have used another body or sending there another body, we should, we should have not cajoled this type of um, 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 outbreak. But thank God we are able to fight. And there later, when we have this NAC, support from NAC came in, we continue. So the support from NERC was a big turning point, would you say? Yeah, it, 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 they, they supported us because when they came in, they come, they, they come with a lot of, uh, they came with a lot of um, 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 logistics like vehicles, sometimes boosting other things, trying to involve a lot of um, partners, trying to involve a lot of community. You know, at any time when you want, you, you want to have a quick response, have a logistic system put in place that we have a, lo a quick um, response. Even. The time when DHMT is um, overseeing this Ebola outbreak, uh, we use our CHOs, our staff to do burial in their community because that time there is no supported form for barriers. Unless when they started sending support that we, we, we recruit um, chiefdom barriers uh, that they have been doing in their chiefdoms. But that time they are just working to have these this, this, this people buried in a location, it just when that came in and came with a lot of logistics, like bikes, vehicles, and the response started to at least achieve its own process. I see. You, you described how you yourself donned PPE and went into a house and... Yeah, yeah, really. What's that, I mean, what's that like it's for you? that time, it's really, maybe I use one PPE for the next of one week because <laughs> PPE are not sufficient, do you understand? We have few PPEs, 
So few, um, few, few gloves, few, few people. In fact, the gloves we have chlorine. When we use the gloves, we wash it with chlorine. We dry them out and use it. Even the people we are even using that, uh, we don't burn them because when you burn, you don't have again uh, because we don't have a lot of logistics. That's why I said Ebola came into the country. It really um, helped us to see our nakedness and make sure that we put system in place doing, doing in terms of health. But the health system has become so weak. Um, but we manage our few resources to manage because we are Ministry of Health and Sanitation Workers. And we have signed for that that we, our motto is to save life. So we need to save life. If in, in case the time I, I was contacted the virus, I, I should have gone, die. I know that I, I die in respect of my community. I'm sad. That's it. Yeah. Were you, weren't you afraid sometimes, though? I mean, you were in such close contact with people. Yeah, well, uh, it's just a matter of when you have a lot of soldiers, you are, you are the commander of these, those soldiers. I'm the commander of contact tracing. If I, I started to become afraid, what, what about the other, what can we do? They, they too would be afraid, so that's why, you see. When they see me there in the war front, they, are, they feel encouraged, they too back. Um, continue to do their hard work and make sure that we work as a team. If I, I, I return myself back, all of them will say, okay, the man, our boss is there, when he comes, bop, 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 he goes back, doing nothing. So they too, say, they, too they, they, they will not give you information. So you see, sometimes you need to sacrifice. If really girls need your, your life, you continue to have it. If you are gone, you are gone. Yeah. Yeah, so it's really not easy for us. Do you remember when, when CDC first came to Mabaruka and the people you first started to work with from CDC? Yeah, but I think, I think is, um, people that I first started to work with um, is a, a very tall lady. I still remember um, the after. Mm, um, I cannot remember a lot. The only thing about after about three, four things, um, Dan came, but Shara also came. I mean, I said a lot. Even the um, this one, it, I think he visited us last month. I saw her. In fact, she has a dog. He said, oh, gosh, this is my dog. Uh, it's, um, she, most time I have the bangles. The breeze we had, I think, is for her health. But I cannot remember most of their names. Um, I just try to remember a few. But the first lady that came here is that very tall lady. If you can call her name, if I, I will know, but I cannot remember her name for now. But very tall lady. Is uh, Sometimes the way he stands, he has some style when he's standing. So most of the time I, I disturb her. I say, ah, this is the style. I say, no, this is my normal way of, of, of standing. Because she's too, so tall. So sometimes when she's standing, she, she has some suddenly. Uh, to make her, her stand in the proper way. So the most time, I think most time, uh, the time that CDC came, it relieves our work because they tried to put in a system by um, implementing case investigator. During that time, during the time of Ebola, I do contact tracing, I do surveillance with the surveillance officer, I, I do case investigators. We supply food, lots of work because no resources. You know, you only have people come in when there is no that at the end of the month you expect something. But when you know that you don't expect something, they leave it for us. So we are, we are doing double goals. Double goals in the DHMT. But yes, we will manage. That's part of everything we manage. Yes, but during the time of it, when CDC came in, we are the first people that um, they train, to show a train on case investigator. Sorry, because the last, the, the second one that they trained, Bob, Bob died, but with, um, not for Ebola, it's a um, liver problem. Yeah. So they trained us before concern started to come with their support. Yeah, you see. Have conc did. concern came with the support? Yeah, by um, supporting the case investigator. So the after when they have, we have trained the case investigator, I reviewed myself there and concentrated on my contact tracing. Mm. Yeah, you see. When people from different agencies like CDC or Concern came in, um, did you feel like you were listened to? 
that you did you feel like you were listened to always by these international organizations that came in that that they respected your expertise your local yeah. knowledge yeah at any time they, they we have any NGO expertise came in we had our meeting um entry meeting we discuss we know their motive it's a, a big relief because if they know that I'm doing this A, B, C, and D, because of there is no fund, if they if, if, when when they came in, they tried to prepare fund and have more people involved involved to the program, so that more or less um, um, more or less work will, will be done. You see, but the the, the intervention of um, CDC and NGO some NGO partner really relieve our, our stress. They really relieve our stress because we have no time to. Have rest. Sometimes we are here till one o'clock in the morning, just doing the work, because there are no one who, who you expect to do the work when there is no phone, when there is no logistics, unless we do it, because we have been signed in the ministry that we have to do this. So that's why. Yeah. Was Was there anything that uh, you noticed that they could have done better? Those international organizations who came in, any suggestions for them for when they do it, work on a similar outbreak that happens in the future? Well, in the future, the system, in fact, even in the, the area that they have been treating the patients, I was there at Bo. I was admitted there. Quick response is not available in the treatment center. You'll be there. In fact, people to respond to you on time, it's really difficult at the time I was in the treatment center. I, for me, since I know that I'm, a, I'm offering medical, even in treatment center, I, I go in for ORS, go in a lot of fluid. I, I use a lot. In fact, if really, when people are, um, have the, the disease, have the disease conveyed to the, the treatment centers, the open IV lines, we should have got a lot of survivors by more than the way that we have them. Because I thank God, I thank God, and I thank God for Dr. Sayu. He calls the sea choose there. Call them immediately. That guy is my man, he's my main front man. Please treat him immediately. That time, they open a lot of IV lines, swans, a lot of fields. So I bless Dr. Sayu on that. That's why he's always my commander, because he helped to save my life. But William, if these people, um, 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 these people having there at the treatment center, they try to open IV lines, straight, trying to um, um, uh, rehydrate them again, it will, we, we should have, have a lot of survivors. Because supplying ORS makes you, uh, maybe uh, uh, intimates you to vomit again. But giving a lot of IV fillets helps you to regain your strength. So if they should have opened IV, that's why you see at 34, I think they have a lot of survival more than the other areas because they open, open IV lines immediately. But there, when you go there, give your eye. In fact, when you go there, you just fling the virus. They say you have to mix it. They are afraid. Anybody is afraid of the virus. But believe me, me if we should have, have a good, good, technical know-how on how to treat this virus. Ordinary fluids give you a lot of fluids. We, we kill this virus. It's a fragile virus. You understand? But well, people have been sent there. In fact, two of our, our one, one the ambulance guy and one, one of the other guy died because of late response. The guy was seriously um, 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 vomiting with frequency too till the other day without giving, no attention of drug. The only drug that they gave him, I mix ORS for, for, for our ambulance driver that he dies. I don't have the, 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 the materials to open IV line because if I should have, have that, that, those mats, I should have do it there. You understand? Even it come on a time, the, the third day that I started to, to, to recover. Whenever, immediately when the expertise came in, he saw the, the drip. He said, oh, oh, come on. I said, no, I can't do it. I make sure that I, I release the drip. I have it down. Because I was still vomiting. But I thank God. God gave me 
the knowledge to do that. And by the, um, the help of Dr. Sayo and the CHOs in, in, in Bo, makes me. But most of these people dying because of late response, given just ORS. Sometimes they have this ORS. Some, the, the, the person is stressful. He cannot do nothing. It's stressful. So when it's stressful, you cannot do nothing. What, how do you want the person to do? Just to lie down, having frequent stool, having frequent vomiting. Later, apparently, he dies because no active, immediate response given. That's why you see people have, have been afraid to go to Kailan or, or to go to Bill. Because when you go there, you die. Yeah. For me, I, uh, I really, I, I was in the treatment center for three days when my result came out. Yeah. Because I know that I'm um, probably boom. Because every day I'm playing with this, I'm doing this. Um, I tell it I will get the virus. That's I have been, I've been known because things things are not too far in the time when when this Ebola outbreak come. So yeah, you for a while there was no Ebola treatment unit in like in the district. In right. this suite, we don't have no Ebola to main units. We have the Olin Center. We just have the Olin Center Hospital. They are, they are, we have you there for some time. They are after when you, you result prove positive, they send you to Kailan. At the initial, we have to wait for the ambulance. After uh, Bombali, Cambia, Poloko, before the ambulance come here and have the, this patient um, um, conveyed to Kailan. But eventually, it's, uh, was it's it? not really easy with us. Eventually, they uh, did build. Was it was it the British uh, who who built uh, a unit between here and McKenney? Well, that's that is the, this the, that is the, the last stage now. That is the last them. stage. The the treatment center in McKenney is the last stage now. Ebola has almost gotten to an end. In fact, in Tonkolele, we have not been having it because I, I can remember our last day of uh, this virus is um um. um is April, I think it's April, that we have two days free. It's 17th April, 2014. So the, I think in the 19th days, the, the 19th, we have free of Ebola. So that, that time, in fact, uh, this treatment center in Bombay, I think, even this part of Losa, it just, when um, Ebola almost getting started to, to people know how Ebola behave, they know how to report them, things. But during the time when we have Ebola outbreak, hey, it's really a tedious time. It's really a very difficult time for us. Yeah. Can I, can I ask uh, what it was like getting to know, getting to meet, and getting to work with Mr. Dan Martin, who is sitting right here? Yeah, uh, he's, he's my tutor. Um, I, I gain a lot, of, a lot of things from him. Most time visit the Koning case because we have been having a lot of Ebola cases there. So most time visit Koning case, the tennis, uh, Matonka, those areas. You know, most time. But he, I think the the advent of um, the CDC really, I we appreciate the DHMT because they just they don't they don't just come in and take people, but they empowered us. They give us a lot of training for sustainability. But some NGOs. They, they came with a different entity people, and for now, when Ebola is gone, all of them are gone. We are still doing our active surveillance. But CDC, make sure that the powers below our capacity, and we're trying to do that. You see, that's why at any time, the, the time when I think we are traveling from Nashimbi, uh, when Diana got a call that he is going, I said, wow. We know how we sometimes feel when CDC are leaving. We know. Because they don't come with people outside to help us for the work, but they make sure that they build up our capacity and make sure that and, and train us how to do things. It's not because of it's there, but I need to say the truth. And that's why when I, I, I see him today, I embrace him. Tisha is another man. He's, and in fact, we have our last um, Ebola um, outbreak. Tisha came. He said, walk. And they trust me because for now, the knowledge that I have got for contact tracing is too much because last time we have one 
contact that escape. I, 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 I go all out to cut the, 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 the contacts. Yes, because of the knowledge I have had through these guys. What happened? What happened exactly? What happened is that um, Masanga, you know, that's the, the last contact we have, the hospital and Masesebe. So the guy living in the same world, because of he heard about the, this disease, he ran away, uh, he runs away. And what happened, he could not locate the guy. So that was explained to me. So I allowed my guys to go to the field. I tried to have their, their, the names of the, the community, the, the, their friends, the, the area they, they live, the, the guy's telephone number. So we try, try, we cannot get it. So what I would do, I try to use another method is that calling the guy, saying I am so so because I already know his friends around. So I use one of his friends' name that I have for you this morning. This money is from Soso area because I know that he, he has been doing microcredits. The guy has been doing microcredits. So I told him that there's this money for you for the microcredit. So he said, okay. He said, where? Yeah. I said, just come by my book out, GT, uh, uh, UT Bank. <clears throat> you meet me there. So the guy came. When the guy came, we have, we have the guy um, handle and have him come in time. But unfortunately for him, he did not catch the virus. So, you see, because we have a lot of trainings from these guys from the CDC. We, are, we even have one Indian, Indian woman that I most time uh, used to destroy. Remember, the time we went at um, the boundary after Bendugu, uh, all of us went together. Uh, in fact, I, um, that CDC lady, Indian woman, with Dr. Sayu, we are using the same vehicle. Now, Dr. Saro sometimes disturbed the, the, the CDC. He said, he said we, are, we are doing Operation Chase the virus during the night. If we, ca we catch the virus, we will come and tell you. So we have those forms, forms doing most times. But thank God our commander, Dr. Saro, don't catch the virus. But I am, as a, a supporting commander, I catch the virus and I survive. So this now we have a, we are creating forms at any time we met with Dr. Saro. Yeah. Can I? You you can you can say no if you if you want to. Yeah. But um, you know you've told me some bits and pieces about your own experience uh, mm -hmm. with with Ebola, coming down with it, mm -hmm. um, being treated in Bo. Would you mind just starting from the beginning when you first started showing symptoms, and just telling me that that story? Yeah. Um, I think that was on Friday that. Um, I have doc Dr. Sayu said, oh, okay, Augustine, let's go travel to my 91. I said, no problem, because I'm working with him closely, doing everything closely with him. It's no problem. He said, can you drive? I said, no. I said, doctor, I, I, I drive all night. I don't need to drive this morning. You drive. I said, no problem. Drive. We arrive in my 91. We buy some things. That time I have a bread because most times when when my, my food is prepared at home, they just put it in the plastic and send it to me. So I have bread. So Dr. Sayo said, okay, I'm going I'm hungry. I said, I have a bread. Let's share. I said, for me, I, 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 I cannot eat for now because I don't have no appetite to eat. He said, what, what's happening? I said, nothing. So he, he got some salt drink and cold water for me. So I, I drank those water and salt drink. So we, we went and visited the, the old center in my 91. Was, uh, the nurses prepared some food for us and we went there and have just two, three spoons for me. I, tell, I, I told Dr. Sayer, I said, I'm okay. He said, oh, what's wrong? You are, you, you, are, you are eating a lot. But today I said, no, I'm okay. So when we are coming, he's observing me. Then I came back, I told him, I said, doctor, I need to rest. I said, I'm, I'm ex I've been exhausted all this week. <laughs> Sorry. I said, I need to rest. So he said, okay. So I went back home. Thereafter, he called me by seven. So Augustine, how are you feeling? I said, I'm not feeling right. I said, in fact, I've started to vomit. He said, wow. He, he visited me there. He gave me a lot of tutti water. So, to the wing. <laughs> so one night, I was having this um, um, 
fragrance stone, on light, but the minimal. So I, I took some some tablets, so it managed to cut down. But yesterday I was having vomiting. But I have um, one of my my fiancé. I call her to open IV line for me. So she opened the IV line and gave me about two drip. But yet still, I, I was feeling somehow inconceivable. So what I do, I call the ambulance without the notification of DMO or even the operations people here. First thing in the morning, so I call the ambulance. I born in the ambulance on the knowing of my family, in fact. I, I have been um, conveyed to the Olin Centre. Thereafter, I, have, at, I, I, I told Dr. Sai, I said, Doctor, it's good for you to refer me. He said, Augusti, you have not even been tested. He said, I said, Doctor, let me, let me go. So, they gave me the ambulance and I was conveyed. During the time, in fact, the CDC, do, uh, the NAC do not want to release the ambulance there because there is no confirmed confirm results from the the people from Kailan that are, I'm, I'm positive. So they don't re release the ambulance for that. So doctor said no. So doctor managed to send the ambulance. And I was there for three days before ever my result came out. I have been on treatment. So if they should have wasted me for the next three days, yeah, I should have died. Yeah. But thank God to Dr. Sayu, at least speed up my 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 view and make sure that I was refined immediately. Yeah. Can you tell me what happens next? Oh, yeah, it's, it's really terrible. Eh? That's why I said Dr. Sayo played a great school for me. I mentioned that most people, because why why you see most people dying there? Because of late attention. For me, when I reached there, it just during the day because I was there by this hour up to the night, I was struggling myself to have myself water, everything, mixing all this, no attention. But during the night, I called doctor, so I said, doctor, I said, since this, mo this even, um, afternoon when I arrived here, no IV drip, no drug, nothing. I said, I'm dying. So he, he called the, the CHOs there during the night and they opened IV lines for me. And in fact, I even called for support of drugs for me. I was having hiccups, lots of hiccups, that people even cry for me that Augustine is gone. So what I did, I called my fiancé here, because my fiancé, you know, the bike I was using, I asked her to give my, um, the guy um, the bike and fill the bike and send me uh, um, um, uh, um, N -O -M -M. Um, this drug, this uh, Lagatil. Yeah, Lagatil. So she sent me four, um, six types of Lagatil. Do you understand? What is, what is Lagatil? Again? Lagatil is, is um, a sedative drug. Kupumazin is a sedative drug. Sedative drug. Yeah, okay. but it, it's a drug that stops um, 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 vomiting or uh, hiccups. It's a drug that stops um, um, hiccups. But it, it makes you to become um, dozier, um, uh, newsier, uh, and sometimes fatigue, everything. But it's good. So I sent I sent the dog for that. They sent the dog for me, Lagat like six. I took three tablets instead of giving taking two. Because it's 15 milligrams. So I, I took about 125 milligrams. So I slept for two, three days without um, eating, in fact. So people think that I, I have, have died. But those that are working in the wellness center when they go, they know that I'm, I'm talking with them, I see. I just want to rest. I was having my water, I was having some other things, um, liquid for energy, because people are sending some things for me, have them. So when I wake up, I drink and I rest. But three days, I'm, I'm sleeping without doing nothing. So by the time I find my three days, the hiccup stop, vomiting stop, diarrhea stop. So I, I started to take in food. That's why you see, I spent only nine days in the treatment center. Thereafter, I came back, just about two weeks, I started to walk again. In fact, when I started to walk again, we have a, a, a case at um, um, this place, um, Warrior area. Um, 
immediately when I said, Augustine, are you okay? I said, yes. I said, doctor, let's go there. I, I went and, and took the, the sprayer and the digest. I said, doctor, let's go. Anybody said, hey, Augustine, you have come again. You are, you are just from, from, from dying and you have come again. I said, no, we need to walk. You just need to walk. But thank God we succeeded. Mm. That's my, my only thank, um, my thankfulness to God. How did, how did people greet you uh, when you came back? During the time when I came back, the people, you know, I have a lot of people, in fact, do not greet me, really. But when they see me actively involved in, in, in the process again, people feel so happy about me, continue to work again. Yeah. But it's, we just need to do that. We just need to do that. Sure. Yeah. Um, would this also be a good time to re? Oh, I, I guess you. I guess you already did. Okay. Um, so I'm hoping uh, uh, to take advantage of the fact that we have Mr. Dan Martin here, uh, who worked here in Tongalili with you, Augustine, and uh, see if he has anything that he'd like to say or any questions for you. Mm -hmm. so, pass him the mic. I'd like, I'd like to ask any question. Do you want to come sit over here? Uh, either way, either way. <laughs> so my friend, I just have to say first that having this privilege to talk to you None. After all these years, it's really powerful to me, too. So, thank you. Yeah, thank, you thank you, too. But I wonder, that was just, you told us a little about Operation Chase the Virus earlier. Mm -hmm. And some of my funniest memories of you are actually from the times that we were chasing the virus. <laughs> um, I wonder if you might tell us a little more just about the process, starting with we get a call. You, sometimes you get the call directly. We didn't usually get 117, right? No, no, no. Usually the call came either to you or to, to Dr. Osayo no, directly. To surveillance or to your Sometimes point. to uh, Tejan. Or your so point. Somebody gets, you know, your point gets the, the calls. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your point was our uh, M&E, monitor, yeah. monitoring and evaluation officer. Yeah. So somebody gets a call. Yeah. So tell us a little bit, okay, so what happens next? Call comes in. Well, so now, when a call comes in from a community that mm -hmm. there is a person who is sick, so we talk with the contact tracer, identify the house, how many houses that are there, what area, the right side or the left side? Maybe you say the right side. When entering, just count three or four or five houses, is that the very house? We ask all those questions. Maybe you tell me, if it's the third house on the right, mm -hmm. there is a stone there. So we will hang on till the night, nine o'clock, nine, eight, ten o'clock during the night. We launch our operation. When we go there, we have one ambulance, one DMO vehicle, and one operational vehicle that I'm using because I'm, I'm, I'm driving again. So when we go, when we reach, the ambulance will, will um, straight um, um, park at the middle of the town. One vehicle will pass at the edge of the town. And one vehicle will stay at the beginning of the town. We come down, we call the chief, we say we are here for a purpose, and this is that, this is that. And that time again, we have support from the mini ministry, military people. I think we have them two or three guys walking there. So when we are there, you know, the <laughs> when we go, we, we, we explain to them our motive. So we, we start shutting the houses. Any, any, any door that we, we, we we, we meet um, and close down without no padlock. We we'll spoil the, the, the door, and have, and have we have gained entrance in in the room. So sometimes when we sp we spoil the door, we we'll meet the, the, the patient lying down there. So we remove the patient and have have him convey or out to, to the hospital. If he, he become tested and proved positive. Ah, that time, after three days, because we know that after three days, people have started to gain signs, signs and symptoms, three to four days started. So that time, we will, we will launch another operation by checking everyone in the village now. Any one sign, maybe runny nose, maybe fever, headache, any one sign of Ebola, we will remove you there. So that's why we, this is the way how we are we'll chasing the virus. 
You see? So this is the way. And what you just described, uh, I, I just want to highlight this, and you can tell us more about it, but you're describing something that not every district did. Yeah. This was in some ways really unique to Tonkalili, I think. I think it's only Tonkalili that operation chased the virus. We only launched that operation. Yeah. That's why when the president came in yeah, during that time, I, I was given a permission to talk, and we, we, we explained them to that. Because why is Tonkalili will succeed on that? By having few um, uh, people dying in the Ebola, and we have a lot of survivors because of this operation that we, we, we launch. You know, Ebola, when you remove the person earlier in, in the community, there is a chance, chance for, for him to survive. But if you have, him, have the, the patient down, Vom a lot of vomit, everything. By the time you convey the patient in, in my book hospital, the patient must have that die. So these are the reasons why we we conquered these fights with a lot of survivors. You see? Remember the day. It's actually the same day as the photograph I emailed I you. I saw the photograph. That, Remember that the day that we went there. That was Masako. We Ma went to Ma both Mabeko and Masako. Yeah, Masako, right? yeah. Right. The chief's uh, house is mm, there. Mm. And remember that something happened before we picked up the patients that mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. Because that was the day that I think it was five women came in on an ambulance, survivors coming back from Kailan. Yeah. And I remember that as we walked back into town, you gave that speech to the people there about mm. how... Well, you tell me. It was about see people survive. Tell, yeah. tell me more about that. No, well... We went there um, uh, because the time we, we, we go with survivors, because I told them people to be survived is a blessing to them, and they must encourage the survivors to stay in their houses, and they must observe them. Because you, you, maybe you can survive discharge from the treatment center, but since it's the area where we, we, we have the treatment center, Maybe when come, you come back with the virus. So that's why we, need, we always make sure that we observe them for the next 21 days. So we isolate them, them there and make sure that they do not um, um, tease them, provoke them, and continue to support them, you see? Because at the end of the day, if we, cannot, if we don't create a mechanism where the people will accept them again, mm. it's a problem. So, but to make sure that we create those mechanisms make sure that they respect them, they don't have a lot of humiliation and other things. You see? But the day when we went at my baker, people are so enthusiastic to receive their, their family. Because that that's makes them um, say their family are, they have already died. Because at any time when the ambulance picks you up, you have, you have died. So when you come back, they thought that their family, they are, they are rise from the dead. So they are happy, they dance a lot. They are so happy they receive them in a great, great, great manner. In which they too, as a survivor, they, are, they too are glad to be with their communities. Even for me, me too, when I, I came back. In fact, I have a crowd more than the president during the time I, I came. A lot of beating songs, a lot of things, yeah. You see, sometimes, at any time, you have your family going down there. He has been cut. The, the, the disease, contacted the, the disease. When you come back, they will don't believe that if really you are the person. So that's why sometimes they jubilate. Yeah. Yeah, and we jubilated far away, too, yes. believe me, believe <laughs> yeah. me, when we got that news. Yes. Yes. There was celebration in Atlanta, A lot of too. celebration, yeah, a lot of, a lot of celebration. Because by then, quite a bunch of us knew you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I remember that day, because as we walked back into the village, you said to the people, look, you think everyone who goes away for Ebola is dead. Mm -hmm. Look at these survivors. These mm -hmm. are your people. They're yeah. coming back. Yeah. This is why we're telling you, please yeah. let us get you into treatment. Yeah. Please don't hide. Yeah. Please understand that if that we is. get you early, you have a chance. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was such, you, such an yeah. important message. You, you, 
You report yourself earlier, you have chance of survive. Mm. Really. When you report earlier, you have chance to survive. Yeah. You see. So that helps us a great. Mm. Because we have been preaching to them their chances to survive. Some accepted that, some don't accept that. Yeah. Yeah. You see. So how are you since? I know sometimes no, the survivors have had trouble even afterwards. How is it for you? I'm, I'm doing fine. The only thing, uh, my eyesight, uh, last Tusha was here, hmm? so I was having some eyesight. In fact, right now I'm, I'm in college. I'm second year doing public health in university. Oh, good. I'm doing BS in public health. At Njala? Um, yeah, and it's by Kuma University in Makini. Hmm? I'm in second year. But, um, That's great. Sometimes I have, for, for now, due to the, the the brightness of the room. I'm, I'm reading this, but if the dark air, I cannot read this unless oh, really? I use glasses. So really? sometimes it's too difficult for me. That's mm -hmm. all my constraints. Mm -hmm. Because during time I was having some rashes, but thank God it's better now mm -hmm. because I try to make sure that I build up my immune system. Mm. Try to do all that, one or two things. Mm. Yeah, but the only problem that I have now is my eyesight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes unless I, sure. I, I use glasses sure. to read. So otherwise you're strong? Yeah, I'm strong. You yeah. look good. You I'm, look I'm, good. I'm, I'm riding bikes from Biyar to Manai to Mashimbi. I have a bike. You're riding a bike to Mashimbi? Yeah, it's simple. I have a bike. That's two hours by car. Yeah. You, and they're not easy when, hours. When you talk to my demo, you will, you will tell you that August is one of the most active person in the engagement. <laughs> I still maintain my activeness within the region because I know that. Thanks, I'm here. I, I need to perform mm. my duty. Mm. I'm mm. still working very hard. Mm. Yeah. Well, I know you work hard. That's yeah. that's that's the Augustine I've always known. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it, it it gives me so much joy to see you yeah, back on your pleasure. feet and healthy. That's it's a pleasure. That's it. Thank God we survived. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> so, Dan, unless you have more questions. No, I can't think of anything. Okay. I can't think of anything now. Then, then the last thing I'd just like to, to ask is... Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Is Augustine... Is there anything that we haven't talked about, that I haven't asked about? A reflection or a memory about the Ebola response? Anything that you'd like to share and put on the record before we conclude the interview? Uh, the Ebola memories, <laughs> it has come, it has passed. We are still working, so we are grateful that we're working. The only thing, you know, we are praying God let this thing to happen again because we have these our angels coming. Last, they told us some angels coming, came in and said, we'll support you, we'll give you this, you give you this. But just a few amount of angels doing that. You see, even some, especially with the elder people now, no support. Mm. Uh, it's really not easy, but thank God we are still working hard to maintain our, our status and our family. It's just a matter of working hard. If, if, we, if we say we are relying on these people to settle our problems, we, we cannot achieve our, our, our aims and objectives at the end of the day. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I know I know that it's been powerful for Dan, and it's been excellent for me hearing hearing you uh, give your history. So thank you. Most welcome. Yeah.